Hello, I'm Atuba Judge, and I'm so blessed to be bringing God's truth to you today. Praise God. Are you ready? Okay, let's call for that daily bread. Join me in faith, believing that what you're going to say will come to pass. Are you ready? Say, Father, I demand right now my daily bread. It's coming to me in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. Thank you, Holy Spirit. You know, the Lord is speaking to me about someone who there is a particular knowledge you've been searching for. While we're praying, I heard the Lord say that to me. There's something you're searching for and it's something that has to do with knowledge. I'm not saying you want to go to school, but there's something you actually have been looking for. You've been, you've been trying to find out who knows something. The Lord said to me to tell you, because you asked for your daily bread, that knowledge will come to you today. Thank you, Holy Spirit. You see, daily bread is not just about money, food, and things like that. Whatever you need to make today, today for you, it's yours. It's yours. Whether it's knowledge of something you need, it's a favor you need, it's yours today. So receive it. Give God praise. If you're that person, just give God praise. Say, thank you, Lord. I'll receive this thing in the name of Jesus. Because sometimes, you know, you, you're willing to go pay to get something, which is good. There's nothing wrong with that. But then the Holy Spirit can give it to you free of charge. Now, he can give it to you directly or he can cause you to meet someone who will give it to you free of charge and so accurate. See, it's not just because everybody's going to school. You must go to school. See, if you want to go to school, you must find out from the Lord what school has he ordained for you to go to. That's something you need to think about. Praise God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. So we're talking about covetousness. Beware of it. Beware of it beware of it paul says let your life be and sorry hebrews tells us let your life be without it see it's your responsibility it's not oh god take away covetousness from my heart no sir no you are the one to look at it and say this is covet now that's why i'm going into different things so that knowledge and understanding will come to you see knowledge and understanding will come to you so yesterday I was talking about even with spiritual things, people function in covetousness. See, the thoughts in your heart that if I get this thing, I'm made as a preacher is wrong. Is wrong. The desire to get the thing is okay. But the thinking in your heart that that is what will make your ministry, it becomes wrong. Because this is what happens. When, when you assess that gift, when you assess that anointing, whatever you call it, or grace, you realize then that you begin to build your ministry around it. See? You begin to build your ministry around it. And, and, and you, you, you've been doing ministry, teaching God's word, and, and people have been blessed. But you just feel, ah, I want more, I want more, I want more, I want more. And then you say, oh, I think I need to start doing miracles. And then you now look around, oh, this man does miracles. You don't even know the source of the miracle. You don't even know how he started, whether it's genuine from God or he contacted from another, another person. And then you say, ah, I, I need this. And you go and start sowing seeds and sowing seeds and sowing seeds. And soon, you, 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 the grace came on you. Okay. Now the grace came on you and, and you had a meeting and you saw people got healed. Ah! I've seen ministry. Now you've forgotten where the Lord was taking you to before. And you just made a, a junction or a, a bus stop in that place. And that becomes the core of your life. You don't want to be doing ministry for 20, 30 years and the Lord will speak to you and say, Son, are you tired? Do you want to do what I've called you to do? Now? What you have called or have I been doing since? Yeah, it happens. It happens. So like I said, there's nothing wrong in desiring that gift. But can you wait for it? That's what shows the difference between a covetous man and a man who's not covetous. Can you wait for it? I see that in, oh, I like it. Lord, I love that thing. 
and desired. So, but then you need to check your heart. Now, this is where patience comes in. Patience, I call it barite sebania. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Patience will remove covetousness from your heart. See? Now, so we were talking about this rich young ruler yesterday. And he came to Jesus. And like I was explaining to you, this man was desiring something that was deep. And when he met Jesus, he voiced out his desire to Jesus. And Jesus said to him, Go sell everything you have. Give to the poor and come and follow me. What was the man looking for? I want to have life. And Jesus said, okay, go sell everything you have. Come and follow me and you will have life. And the man looked at everything he had gotten. Now remember, remember, and I told you rightly so, this man began his journey in life not looking for things. I know so. This man began his journey in life with looking for life he, he whatever he had heard when he was much much younger that gave him that um, desire or maybe sometimes it's just inbuilt by god see so he knew that life was beyond all these things he knew so he began his journey looking for life but along the way he got things now this is a, 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 a very good lesson. That's why I'm sharing these things with you. And when you see me stay in one place, I'm trying to get out every juice that is in it. So we're looking at this man now. And he began his journey looking for life. Along the way, he got things. Now, he got things enough to make him comfortable. But he was going beyond that. So the day he met Jesus, he asked Jesus that question that has been in his heart. I want life. How do I get it? I've been trying. I've kept all the commandments. I got money. I've not gotten life. The man wasn't sick. The Bible didn't say he was sick. There was just something beyond. And Jesus said, go sell everything you have. Give to the poor and come follow me and then that's when the man realized that something wasn't right not with jesus with him but that's that what the, the instruction that jesus gave brought up something that he had never thought about that's the day he realized that in as he, as he journeyed in life he got encumbered with covetousness yeah. He entered the place of goodness and success, but he didn't watch out for covetousness. So along came covetousness. Many young people, or many people, started ministry with the right mindset. And they believed God, they trusted God, they, they just wanted to see the glory of God. Now, once your heart is genuine, you see, God gives permission to have things. Jesus said, seek ye first the kingdom of God, and all these things shall be added to you. But hey, watch it. When those things are added to you, beware of covetousness. Beware of it. And, and guess what? You will be tested for covetousness before you are given life. You know, that's the, it, it's amazing, but that's how God operates. Before God gives you what is spiritual, he will first give you what is physical. No, no, no. I, I know I started my journey. I got the spiritual faith. You don't understand what I'm talking about. You see, praying in the tongue, praying in the spirit, praying in tongues, those are spiritual things. Yes, I had that before I started having money. That's not what I'm talking about. Now, your, your desire is that you, you do well in life. You're praying to God and then God anoints you with His Spirit. Okay, so now you receive that anointing and you begin to do well. Wow, I pray well. I pray better. My eyes are open to revelations. Yes, wonderful. Then suddenly, things, physical things will begin to come to you. Jesus said it. All these things shall be added to you. Now, a car is added to you. 
a house is added to you. Opportunity to be in business is added to you. Opportunity for estate is added to you. Wealth is added to you. Wow! Brethren, see what God did for me. Yeah, everybody wants to be like you. But one day God looks at you and says, Hey, let's test for covetousness. He will do it. Now, why does he want to test for covetousness? Because you see, there is a level you grow to. And then God will, because your, your blessing came from the Lord. I'm not talking about people who are stealing and doing all kinds of deals. There are pastors who do deals. You should know that now. When I mean deals, I'm not talking about they do business. I'm talking about people who get into all manner of shady things. They don't mind. They just want to prosper. And they tell themselves they use the money for the kingdom of God. There are people like that. But let me tell you now, God doesn't accept such gifts. He doesn't. He'll just leave it there. Continue what you're doing. The day we open the books, we'll not find your name. It's as simple as that. So here is, here is the Lord right now. And he's looking at you. And he asks them the question, is there covetousness in this man? Because as you are growing, covetousness will find a way to come in. Listen, I wish you will understand what, what he meant by it. He said, beware. I tried to explain that to you yesterday and day for yesterday. Beware of this thing. It, it, it will come. It will come. So Jesus said to him, okay, you want life? Yeah, you're lacking one thing. Go sell everything, have give to the poor. Ah! If I sell all I have, where do I start from? I've, I've, I've become known. I've, I've become a man of influence in the society. People respect me. I'll now get flat on the ground. The shame, the disgrace. Yay. Huh? Now, you see, covetousness was now what was speaking in his life. And he considered everything and, shh, Lord, we'll see some other time. The Bible says he went away sad. Why did he go away sad? I thought you were looking for life. He didn't know. I told you, he began his journey looking for life. He didn't know that along the journey, right journey, not, not Satan's journey. I wish you, Jesus gave a parable. I, I, you know, I pray you understand. Jesus gave a parable that a man planted a good seed. Okay. So, but at night, the enemy came and planted tares. And when the servant saw it the next day, they said, hey, what do we do? Should we uproot the tares? They said, no, less. When you're uprooting it, you will destroy the good seed. He said, let them grow together until the harvest. Brothers and sisters, there is a harvest time even in your life. Whatever journey you begin in life, the enemy will come. He will come and he will plant tares. Can, oh, can't we just uproot? You see, that's the problem. Jesus in his wisdom in giving that story. He said, no, the master says, let them grow together. See, growing together is not the problem. The problem is when the time of harvest comes. So for this man's life, the time of harvest came. Now is the time that he's supposed to, because every man who plants anything, it's not when the thing is growing that is glorious. It's when you harvest it and now you can because sometimes you see your crops do so well. Wow, the, the ground is, the field is green. Wow. But when it's time for harvest, as you beat those things, you realize they were all empty. So what happened? Sorrow. You see, the time of harvest came to reveal that nothing was happening. So the time of harvest will come. That is when you're supposed to enter into your glory because the man who has a great harvest that's the time everybody is the pride of everybody. Hey, can we buy this from? Can we buy grains from? Can we? Yes, everybody's coming to. He said, Why? Not because his field was green, because his harvest was great. So Jesus said in his wisdom, Leave them till the time of the harvest. 
So this rich man came to his place of harvest. Now that was the time he was supposed to enter into life. Not dying now, no. Enter into the real thing that God would have blessed him with. That's called true riches. And this man looked at the cost. Because in doing so, everything that have been uh, arrested by the tares will have to be taken away. Now, those tares was what he saw. And he said, nah, I can't let these things go. He said, I can't let them go. What he didn't know. Now, how do I know this? Because when he left, Jesus spoke to the disciples. And one of the disciples, I think Peter, replied to Jesus and says, if it is so. No, he said, Master, we have left all and followed you. And Jesus said, there is no one who has left father more than all these things that will not receive in this life a hundredfold. Now, do you know what a hundredfold is? A hundredfold is not a hundred times. Nah, that's how a lot of people get confused because Jesus said um, a hundredfold. So it means uh, if I sow a car, I shall reap a hundred cars. No, you're wrong. That's what covetousness does to people. So you hear people, I've heard people question that all this seed faith, they are wrong. Because if you look at it now, it says if you give, you will receive a hundred. So they say, check it now. Who has given one car and reaped a hundred car? Okay, it means if you give a, 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 a dollar, you should reap a hundred dollars. If you give a hundred dollars, you should reap um, uh, $10,000. If, you you know, if you give a thousand dollars, you should reap one hundred thousand dollars. That's what a hundredfold. No, sir, that's not what a hundredfold means. A hundredfold means complete complete what does that mean i'll tell you what it means thank you holy spirit help us lord help help i pray the lord helps you understand if i give a car to the lord and i'm believing for a hundredfold harvest what am i believing god for i'm not believing god that one day i'll come and realize hey how many cars do i have i have 10 in portacot 15 in us 20 in lagos ah 30. Wow. Hey, I have a hundred cars. It all began from when I gave one car. Nonsense. That's not true. What is a hundredfold? Mm -hmm. I have this one car and I give it to the Lord. Now, when I mean give it to the Lord, give it to someone by the instruction of the Lord. Okay. So I give it to the Lord. And now, here I am. I may be without a car. Do you know I may be without a car for the next one year or two years? But guess what happens? I want to go somewhere. And while I'm contemplating going to that place, someone comes around and says, Hey, um, I was just passing around and say, Let me greet you. Say, Oh, where are you going to? I'm going to such a place. Oh, let me drop you now. I said, No, I know it's all. Oh, it's, ah, man, come on now. Let, let me drop you. And then the person takes you there. And then you travel to another city. As you're landing at the airport, maybe someone's sitting with you by the plane and, and sitting by you in the plane. So he says, oh, which way are you going to? So I'm going to, oh, that's where I'm going to. Did you come with a car? Oh, no, no, oh, I'll take a car. No, let me drop you, let me drop you. And then, okay, fine. You get a free transport. You travel to a different nation. And you land at the airport. While you're thinking of getting a car, someone, hey, are you not such a person? Hey, what are you doing here? Well, I just came into, ah, oh, how, which way are you going? Now, what's going on? It's a hundredfold harvest that is working. But because of covetousness, you don't realize. Now, you may still be enjoying all this and still be saying, God, where is my car? Oh, God, you've not answered me yet. You've not answered me yet. Why? Covetousness is working in your heart. I'm going to continue tomorrow. Praise God. Father, I bless you. I pray, Lord, you bring understanding to our hearts in these issues. And turn our eyes to see truth. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Amen. God bless you. I'll see you tomorrow. Bye.